Hey everyone! In this video today, I am going to be showing you guys how to make these adorable little dish scrubbies. Whether you're a beginner who wants to do something fun with single crochets, or if you're just looking for a new kind of project to do, these scrubbies are insanely easy and super fun to make, and they don't take very long either. So let's go ahead and get started! So for this project, you're going to want to use some worsted weight yarn, which would be a medium number four. You can really use any kind of yarn you want. I'm gonna go ahead and use acrylic yarn. These are washable, but depending on what type of yarn you use, you wanna be careful. Like if you're using an acrylic yarn like I am, make sure you don't wash it too hot because it is very plasticky as opposed to cotton, which will wash way better on hotter temperatures. But acrylic yarn is perfectly fine to use. I am actually going to use a brand that I found at Michael's called Impeccable, which I don't have the label for because this ball has shrunk after using it so much. But aside from that, of course, you're going to need your hook, and I am using a 5.25 millimeter. Most medium weight yarns call for 5.5 millimeters, but I've been using this hook, and I haven't had any problems with it. If you crochet with a little bit of tighter tension, I would recommend maybe using 5.5 millimeters, but sometimes I crochet with pretty tight tension, just unintentionally, and I still use a little bit of a smaller hook size, so I think either way you'd be fine with whatever you wanted to use. And then of course you're gonna need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle, and that's it. So I know there are already a lot of tutorials out there that explain how to make these, but I like to do it just a little bit differently than what the other videos have shown. So we are going to begin by making our slip knot, of course. And what I like to do is instead of doing 21 chains, I like to do 25 just because I like my scrubbies to be a little bit bigger. And that's actually the nice thing about this scrubby is that you can really make as many chains as you want as long as you make the same amount of rows. And I've noticed that it still looks perfectly fine. I forgot to mention that when you make your slip knot, make sure your tail is super long because we will be using that tail to sew the scrubby together later on. So zoom in here a little bit more and what we are going to do is make our 25 chains. So, of course, you wrap the yarn around and pull through, and that is one chain, and you want to make sure you don't do this way too tight, because when we go back around, you want to make sure that you can get into these loops without too much trouble. So, one, two, three, Twenty three, twenty four, and twenty five. So here we have our little chain right here. Now, this pattern contains increases and decreases, but don't be scared. <laughs> it's actually really easy and not too overwhelming on something like this. It doesn't really matter what you do first as long as you keep it consistent. So we could start decreasing on this side and increasing on this side or vice versa, as long as we keep it consistent. But I am going to go ahead and do increases first. So what you want to do is go from the second chain from the hook, so not this one right here, because our working yarn is in that chain right now. So you want to skip that one and go to the next one and do two single crochets. So we're going to go through the loop, yarn over and pull through once. So now that you have two loops on your hook, yarn over one more time and pull through both of those loops and that is how you do a single crochet. Now if you want to, you can put a stitch marker through that single crochet that we just made if you feel like you are going to get lost. Even though it is pretty easy to keep track of, just do whatever you are going to feel comfortable with. But I don't mind counting all of my single crochets through the row so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And then one more time, in the same chain that we just did, 
our single crochet in, we're going to do another one. So put your hook through, yarn over, and pull through one time so that we have two loops. Oops. Two loops. <laughs> and then yarn over and pull through both of those. And you just did your increase. And next, we are going to do single crochets in each of these chains up until we get to the very last two chains. So if you want to count, do single crochets in 23 of the chains, or just do single crochets up until the last two, because that's where we'll be doing our decrease. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. So the next chain, do a single crochet. And again, put your hook through that chain, yarn over, pull through one loop. So now that you have two, yarn over and pull through those two. And just keep doing those 23 single crochets, and I will meet you at the end of the row. All right, I have one more single crochet to do. And now we have our last two chains, and what we are going to do is decrease this side. So how you decrease. First, you want to put your hook through this chain, yarn over, and pull through that loop. And with a single crochet, you would yarn over and pull through that. But first, we need to go into the last loop, yarn over, pull through. So now that we have three loops on our hook like this, and then yarn over and pull through all those three, and you just did a decrease. And then you want to chain one and turn your work. And now we have the start of our spiral scrubby. So we just decreased on this side. So we want to decrease on this side again. And from here on out, looking at the top of your work, you want to make sure that you go through the back of each loop so that it gives you this nice texture here. So for this row, we want to decrease on this side first because we ended on the decrease. So we want to make it consistent on each side. So what we're going to do is put our hook through the back of that loop, yarn over and pull through one time. And because we're decreasing, we're not finishing yet. We are going to go into the next chain Yarn over and pull through. So now that we have three loops on our hook, yarn over one more time and pull all that through, and that is your decrease. And now, since we are increasing at the very end, you just want to go ahead and do your single crochets all the way down the line until you get to the other side. And this side looks a little confusing because you think it would end right here, but you need to go down one more space, and your very last one in the row is at the very corner, which might seem a little confusing at first, but you can kind of tell because when you look at all these V's up top, there is still one more hiding down here. So go ahead and do single crochets in the back of these loops. So right here, You want to do single crochets all the way to the end and when we get to our very last loop we are going to do two single crochets in that one so that way we can do an increase so make your way down the line and I will show you guys what the increase looks like at the end so here I am coming up at the end of the row I have two more single crochets left to do so you have that right there, and then you round that corner, and there is one more right here. So, let's do a single crochet here, and then this is my very last one. So I'm going to put two single crochets in that same spot. So there is one right there, and then do it in the same spot, and you have two. And there is going to be a small little gap on your increase rows, but that's okay because we'll be sewing that all up in the end and you won't even notice it. So chain one, turn, and you are just repeating everything all the way up until you do 25 rows. So because we did an increase on this side, 
you want to make sure you do an increase here, go all the way down, and when you get to your last two rows, you are going to decrease and single crochet them together, essentially. And that's what you do the whole time. And the way you know which side is your increase and which side is your decrease is by looking at how it slants. You see how this is coming outward? So that means this is the increasing side, and this side will be the decreasing side, as you can see. It kind of angles inward like that. So one more time, not in your turning chain, but the next chain from the hook, you want to do two single crochets. And then go ahead and single crochet in the back of those loops all the way until you get to your last two loops. So now I'm at my last two loops right here and to decrease once again. Put your hook in through the back of that loop, yarn over and pull through one time, and then put your hook into the next loop, yarn over and pull through once, have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all those, and that's your decrease, chain one, and turn. And that's what you're going to repeat the whole way until you get to the end. Now because we did 25 chains, we want to actually make sure that we do 26 rows, because if we don't count this, we want to make sure that our tail ends up being on the same side as our very first tail is. And that will make sense when we sew it all together. And it's actually really easy to count your rows on this scrubby, because each row will either stick up or it'll go in like that. So not counting your very first row of chains, this bump right here is one, this divot is two, and then this one is our third row. So keep doing what you're doing. Do a decrease at the start of your decreasing side and end with an increase on your increasing side. Chain one, turn, vice versa, and keep doing that until you have 26 rows. So I realized while I was working on this that there is one thing I forgot to tell you guys about, and that is if you are trying to keep track of your rows by counting them, you will probably notice that there will be 23 single crochets each time you do it, because even though we started out doing 25 chains for our foundation row, you are decreasing two of your single crochets, and then on one side, you're increasing only on one. So as you're working along, make sure that you have 23 loops each time you begin and end. Your turning chain can count as one, and that would make it 24, but I find that it doesn't really matter when I'm actually working on the scrubby itself. So that's one thing you guys want to make sure of if you're counting your chains. <laughs> All right, once you get to your 25th row, you're going to end on a decrease. So really quick, let's make sure we finish our very last single crochet. And you don't have to chain one. You can go ahead and make sure you cut yourself a pretty long tail for sewing in. And then you can yarn over and pull that through. And now you have your finished product. Well, almost. <laughs> your piece is going to end up looking like a parallelogram. So for sewing this together, you want to make sure that you have your tails on the bottom and make sure that this side is sort of jutting out and this side is slanting down, if that kind of makes sense visually. And you want to go ahead and get your needle ready. So what we are going to do is take our left point up here and touch it to the top on the right side. And then our bottom right point is going to fold into the middle like this. And it doesn't matter which tail you want to do first. I made this one way too short, so I'm going to deal with this one on the other side. <laughs> so go ahead and take your tail and thread your needle. And it's going to be kind of hard to tell, but you want to make sure that you are threading through each of the loop down the line. So 
This side is going to be very obvious where each loop is, and this side is going to be a little bit more confusing because this is the bottom of our foundation chain. If you look really closely, you can kind of see the little Vs. And for the longest time, I thought I needed to thread perfectly through every single hole, but every time I have sewn this together, I <laughs> miss a few spaces up here. But either way, don't worry about it too much because it's not gonna be the end of the world, you know, if you miss a few spots. So what I am going to do first is thread through this very first loop down here. And I'm going to find the very first loop on the other side and go ahead and pull that through. And this is why you want really long tails because you wanna make sure that you can go all the way to the end plus around the top of this. And then go ahead and go into the next loop here and pull through. And you just wanna kinda of sew all the way down, pull it tight every few stitches, <laughs> but make sure you don't pull it too tight. So we have our next loop right here. Go ahead and find your next one and try to make sure you don't go through the same one that you threaded through before. And if you can't really tell where exactly you've already threaded through, you can make this sewing a little loose so that way you can see here I just looped through this hole. So that tells me I can go up to the next one and thread through the other one. And it makes it a little easier to sew it loosely at first just because of that fact. And I am just going under the two top loops. You don't have to go any farther down. And it gets a little confusing how far you need to go, but just kind of guess if you need to. I can kind of tell when I need to stop when this piece right here kind of stops right where that hole is. So I want to make sure that I just go to here. So you can see I have just this last one right here. And because I still have a couple to go through, I'm just going to skip and go to the top right there. And then just pull until it feels tight enough and it's not cinching any of this together too tightly. So now that you have that, we are just going to go around and weave in and out of the very tops of these holes right here. So this part does not matter at all where you go in and out of. And go all the way around until you get to the beginning, which it's kind of hard to tell where that's at. So if you want to go a little farther, that's fine. Just go until you kind of get back to the beginning. And what I'm going to do is instead of pulling it up through the hole, I'm going to go down to the other side and pull this super tight so that way we close this up. I'm going to put my fingers in here and just kind of pull that really tight so that way we totally close this up. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I like my scrubbies to kind of stay pancaked and I don't want them coming out of shape and turning into a sort of tube like this. So I'm going to leave this out for a little bit and I will show you what we're going to do with that after we do the same thing on the other side. And I'm a little worried for this side because I made my tail way too short. I'm just going to tie a piece of scrap yarn to the end of this one just so that way I can have more room to sew. You won't have to do this because I already told you to make sure your tail was long enough. So just do what you did on the other side, weave your tail in and out. And then on this side, I am actually going to make sure that I come out from inside the circle 
So you can tell it's already trying to make its circle. <laughs> but I am going to tie these two together. Tie it pretty tight. And if you want to stop here, you can just cut it off, form your circle. But what I like to do is to form my circle. And it makes its shape pretty well the first time, but there are a few times where I didn't flatten it very well and I get these weird little mouths <laughs> on my scrubbies. But if that happens to you, I wouldn't really worry about it. There it is already done. And just for added security, what I like to do is thread both of these tails through my needle. And I just like to poke right through the center, bring it to the other side, and tie another super tight knot. And then, so I can hide the tails, I am going to thread it one more time and stick my needle back through the middle of the scrubby. And then I'm going to cut my tail as close to the scrubby as I can and kind of poof it out a little bit so that the tails are now hidden inside of the scrubby. And that's it. You can finally wash your dishes with your own handmade sponge. <laughs> and because we did 25 instead of 21, it's going to be a little bit bigger. So if you have bigger pots and pans that you want to wash, then the bigger scrubbies are perfect for that. And it is totally as simple as that. You can make a ton of these in a really short amount of time. You can make them for your friends, your family, for yourself, of course. And they can be washed. But like I said, if you're using acrylic yarn, make sure you don't wash it too hot or else it might kind of melt it. Just make sure you pay attention to what your yarn label says and you will be totally fine washing and drying them. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this little crochet video today. And if you want to learn how to make these adorable dish pads, I will be making a video on these pretty soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video today and I will see you in the next one.